Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Barclay Payne and Rick Moon with Matex USA. Guys, how you doing? Doing great, Kemp. How are you? I'm great. Good to talk to you. Barclay, you're the managing director of Matex USA, and Rick, you're sales manager, right? That's right. All right. So the reason I wanted to talk to you is I haven't interviewed you since this announcement's been made that you've made a $60 million investment in a new backing facility in Chatsworth. We'll get into more details on that in a minute. But if you would, first, tell me just a little bit about Matex. Sure, Kemp. And first, thanks for having us on this morning. Sure. Matex is a Saudi-based manufacturing company. Commercial headquarters are based in Dubai. We have three strategic business units. Obviously, Fabrics is one. Uh, Geo Textiles is a second business unit. And then our uh, turf and grass yarn business as well. So those are the three strategic business units. Here in the U.S., we have primarily been a sales and distribution function for the past seven years. I've been with the company for the entire seven years. And over the business, we were doing roughly six or seven million a year, and we've grown that significantly, getting close to $60 million in revenue a year. We've grown to the size now where we felt the need that we needed to invest in the U.S. marketplace, have a footprint here because the U.S. market is now our largest market for the company. So prior to this, everything you've been selling, you've been making over in Saudi Arabia and importing, and so once this plan is finished, uh, you'll be doing domestic manufacturing. That's correct. We have two oven backing plants in the Middle East today. We have one in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and we have one in Dubai. We will continue to import products out of the Middle East for the local market, for the U.S. market. That will continue. Plant that we have here, we use three products in that plant. Okay. We currently not produce in the Middle East or cool. the packing, which will have an open end spun yarn, which U.S. market requires. Uh, six, uh, and product that works on their coating lines. That product here, we produce our standard polypropylene primary backing, which we produce in the the middle of the day. Uh, capacity uh, product line. New product that we will make is polyester woven, and that's primarily targeted for carpet tiles. But we also believe there are other areas that uh, that product end up in. Okay, very interesting. So uh, now I had, I was in that you were already in the secondary backing business, but but you... we make secondary backing in our Jetta facility. However, that's with a uh, a beast texturized yarn. Okay. And products really not conducive to the U.S. marketplace. Uh, so, uh, a little product in the U.S., but uh, very, very small, mm-hmm. uh, producing uh, an oak spawn secondary uh, here in the States. Okay. One of the questions that I'm sure some people would want to know that, or that know this business very well is uh, obviously it is a, a great place to get uh, the polymer, the raw material, uh, you know, just being close to the source. Uh, so importing your own raw material or, or buying it, uh, as, what, what, what's your plan? No, uh, domestic, okay. uh, probably purchased domestically. So uh, propylene is higher here in the U.S. versus the Middle East. Uh, uh, over time, mm-hmm. uh, we, we feel like the U.S. market will be more competitive. Uh, there's an investment going on where propylene where is going to be made uh uh, so, therefore, supply is going to increase on the propylene, which is really driving pricing for polypropylene. Yeah. So, uh, we still believe that you will have uh, uh, an advantage on polypropylene resin in the Middle East. That will continue. Uh, we, we do believe that. Uh, however, we spend a lot of money shipping our products from the Middle East to the U.S., so you have all of that savings. So, uh, all in all, the U.S. will still be a slightly higher manufacturing cost environment. Uh, but we plan on making, uh, you know, a lot of our higher-end goods here in the U.S. for for the marketplace. Okay, I understand. So the main motivation behind this investment is to, I guess, to shorten the cycle time to, to have U.S. manufacturing. That's correct. I mean, you've got a lot of advantages from being right here in the backyard of your customers. Right. Uh, obviously, product development, R&D work, things like that is significantly reduced. You look at your working capital that's involved. You'd be shocked at how many millions of dollars we have tied up in inventory 
both in our warehouse as well as on the water. So that's a cost that will be uh, not eliminated, obviously, but it will be significantly reduced. Another factor that maybe you can help me with is, uh, you know, everybody has seen what Bob Shaw's been able to do as he retools with the latest equipment. There'll be an advantage both from a quality and probably an efficiency standpoint on the fact that this is a brand new facility, right? There's no question the equipment that we have is the latest technology that's available. So definitely you've got a step change there in technology that's going to make us more efficient. Consistency, I think, if you look at our quality, no one makes a, a more consistent product than Matex. We do a very, very good job of producing a product that day in and day out is going to act the same. And that's something I think our customers recognize. That's, that's something, that's a big reason why we've been successful. Kim, probably people don't realize Matex is the largest provider of primary backing in the U.S. market. We are the largest supplier of merchant polypropylene primary woven backing. Okay. Most people should know that you can't make carpet without backing, and, and most carpets have two layers. They have a primary that you tuft into and a secondary that's added to the back for reinforcement. So most of the carpet's made that way. And when you say you're the largest merchant, it means that you know there are some companies that make their own, but as far as arm's length relationship, you're, you're the largest supplier of primary. That's interesting to know. Yes, that's correct. I mentioned at the beginning, Rick's on the interview here with us as well. Rick, you're new with this company, right? Right, new with my taste, but, you know, I've been in the industry for over 40 years. and Walked in sale on carpets back in the early 70s and stayed in carpet ever since. So I've seen a lot of changes. You've worked with Barclay in the past, haven't you? Yes, Barclay and I have worked together, and we've got several former associates who made their way through the industry. They didn't come directly over here, but... Uh, we've got some guys that have been around, been exposed to a lot. Very talented team. All right, so this is interesting that you're going to be making a woven backing for modular. Everybody knows modular is the fastest growing soft category right now. So what else separates Matex from the other options that are out there? I'd submit it's really more about attitude mm -hmm. and about the way the, the approach business over here is hands-on. It reminds me a lot of the early days. You know, I spent time with Julian Solid Queen and, in those days, man, we were wide open and everybody did everything. Whatever needed doing was done and it was taken care of. So there's a real attitude over here, a real closeness to the process, to the product, and to the customers. We fight for business here. We want business. It's aggressive. It's, uh, the juices are flowing. It's really like being back in the early days of the carpet industry with all the entrepreneurial spirit that was involved in the early days. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, we're rolling in brand new technology. So you're taking these guys and putting in servo controls on looms that nobody's got but us. They're building extreme flexibility, product design. We're going to be able to design far more products on these things than the, than the old fashioned equipment. It's far more than a step change over here in that direction. But when you combine that new technology with that old fashioned attitude, it's really impressive. I've got to say that. All right, so when will this plant be up and running in the U.S.? Today, we've had some challenges this winter with weather, uh -huh. and so that, that definitely has delayed us in getting a manufacturing plant built. We still have an expectation of uh, firing up our first extrusion line, let's say mid-June time frame, with production coming off the loom sometime in July and full ramp-up of the plant will be completed sometime in September. Okay, open in September. Well, that's great. That's good to talk to you. I did want to let our listeners know what was going on from a backing perspective here in the U.S. Again, been talking to Barclay Payne and Rick Moon with Matex, and you've been listening to Kemp Har and FloorDaily.net.